Hi, it's Sean from Mossy. In today's episode, I'm going to give you 15 go-to wedding images that you can use this weekend or any wedding, uh, one of which includes this, which was my favorite tool for many years in my camera bag. I've shot almost 400 weddings, and in that time, I developed a whole wide range of shots that I went to. In addition to all the repertoire shots that I would do, my star as a wedding photographer was essentially to be a guest as a camera. I spent my time observing and capturing and taking 90% of the time as natural shots. 10% of the time we would do uh, the family groups and then some orchestrated um, couple of shots as well. What I developed over time is some little go-to shots that I would do. Very, most of them don't require much uh, orchestration. They're just shots that I think work very well and add to the portfolio. I think if you've been shooting weddings either for a while or you're new to it, uh, you want to have some kind of go-to images and something that you need to update all the time have little ideas in your head that go what can I do here what can I do there especially when you're running low on time and suddenly everything's running late and suddenly you've got to do a load of shots uh, very quickly uh, because it's what's expected of you but you want to get something done very quickly it's nice to have a go-to list in your head uh, what I'm going to run through today is 15 images that I uh, quite often went to uh, sometimes quite often sometimes uh, only occasionally that when I saw fit that would really work well for a wedding day added to my portfolio and certainly added to experience and the images that my bride and groom got um, what I'm going to do is go through them for you in kind of chronological order for a wedding day uh, Hopefully some of them are interesting and different and hopefully you get something out of it. If you do, I'd love a thumbs up uh, and a subscribe would be great. Um, any images that you have that your own go-to images that you think work very well, please do share them in the comments below. Uh, we'll have a look through that and see. Maybe we'll do a second video on suggestions made by people who've, who've viewed the channel come up with different, more interesting uh, and intuitive uh, images than I have here. Hopefully you enjoy this. We'll get into the shots. Right, so here's 15 go-to wedding shots. These shots are not your, don't forget to get the kiss, don't forget to get the back of the dress, don't forget to get various parts of the day. This is nice little things to keep in your back pocket almost with regards to great images that you go to on the day and thinking, what should I do next? I'm under pressure, what will I do? I know I'll do this. So let's dive right in, there's 15 of them. Some will go through in, in more detail than others. Some will be self-explanatory. It's just nice to have these. What I'm also gonna do is I've also, and I'll put a link in the description below, is I'm gonna create a Pinterest board based around these images. So all the images you see in this collection today will all go onto Pinterest board, which I'll share with you. Feel free to download it in, onto your phone or keep it handy. So when you're on a wedding and it's all a bit chaotic and you think, what do I do now? Have a, have, a, have a look through the Pinterest board and, and feel free to use them as inspiration. Right, let's go to number one. So one of my big bugbears, and you may get a few of these in this video, is uh, seeing the dress just hanging on the back of a door. Uh, that's where the brides put it, that's where the bridesmaids have put it. Uh, I see photographs of dresses flat, dead, boring on the back of a door so often. A bride has spent so long choosing the right dress for her and uh, she loves it. it. It's probably something that she spent months and multiple times to wearing dress or choosing the right dress. So we want to showcase it as best as we can. Yes, it's going to look amazing on her, but it's always nice to get that massive, impactful image um, that will open an album or will open a collection for her. So I always say put the dress somewhere interesting. And I know sometimes people aren't, the venues aren't as grand or as interesting, but there is options on everything. Uh, this is actually the first time I did something interesting with the dress. Uh, we'll come to this shot in a minute, uh, but this was hanging off a, a, a staircase. Um, so what I always do is go into a venue Find somewhere interesting. Now this, uh, you can't see it fully in this picture, but this is the largest unsupported staircase in Europe. It's about 70 feet down to the bottom. Um, purely by, uh, and a lot of people ask, well, how do you get the bride to, to agree to have the dress? Hang for something like this is you just talk to them beforehand. You do a couple of sample images. You show them what you do when you arrive on a wedding day. And they, sometimes they're quite excited and kind of going, well, where are you going to hang my dress from? Where have you seen? What's different? Where are you going to go to with this? So by just laying the foundations earlier in the meetings and the conversations you have, you'll gain the trust. And quite often I'll also bring a bridesmaid with me. And I'll say, right, bridesmaid, you're gonna come with me, you're gonna hang up the dress. So if it falls to the ground, it's your fault, not mine. A little throwaway joke line, but it is good to have a bridesmaid with you to, to help you with this. Um, this is just literally hanging it naturally lit. I've, I've taken a few shots. We do typically shoot the front of the dress rather than the back. The back quite often has uh, laces on it or, um, 
various bits and pieces to keep the dress together basically so the front of the dress quite often, quite often works very well uh, i'll always change my angle up as well so you can shoot from above and below this is quite a simple staircase as far as hotels go um, so it's quite a nice angle to get it on there something that's also interesting as well and this is the same dress is this is an angle I see very, very rarely, and this is a pulled back shot. I typically would have actually zoomed in a lot more into this. So uh, you can see the interesting patterns in, in the dress from underneath. It's an unusual shot. It's something different. Again, maybe it's one of these go-to two shots for you. I'll go through a few other ideas for you. That's the same staircase as you saw in the first image, just shot from below. We had the space to play with here. It is an amazing staircase. I appreciate not every wedding has this staircase. We're just lucky where we were. Uh, if you don't have that staircase, take it outside. Take us out and hang on a tree. This is outside someone's house. It's a nice day. We found good shade. I think we actually possibly even borrowed the, uh, a different coat hanger because wedding dresses quite often come on a dark um, or a bit of a cheap uh, hanger. So we borrowed a nice hanger, uh, took it into a nice place. Again, the bridesmaid is off to one side to make sure she catches it if it drops, but it's just a different shot than the back of the door shot. Uh, I'll take you through a few more of these so you get the general idea. Depending on the venue, hanging up high, this is simply the entrance into the hotel. I like the leading lights of, of the um, uh, the um, lights uh, above it uh, and the leading lines of the dogs and everything else. So it's just something to keep in mind as you walk into a venue going, where can I hang the dress? Where can I hang the dress? Again, we know that dresses aren't supposed to be seen before the venue by anybody else. So you have to be subtle and quick and have people on hand and don't spend more than five minutes out of the room or she may get a little bit uh, worried. Uh, this was the first time I ever hung a dress uh, from something a little bit more interesting. I just got bored of, of hanging dresses on back of doors and seeing there. I asked for permission. They said yes, it worked very well. Uh, let me take you through a few more of these. This is a fairly straightforward room. Uh, yes, it's pretty, but by framing it in a doorway, it just made it a little bit more interesting again. Uh, and again, on the framing side of things, just hanging it on the mirror because we couldn't go anywhere else, framing it through just a little bit more interesting than back of the door and more staircases. Right, well, hopefully that gets that point across. Just take the dress. It's also, it gives you an easy start to the day. Um, in fact, you can go in, great, can I borrow the dress? You go back outside, you hang the dress up. It's a nice little, there's no pressure on you. You can just take five minutes to photograph a, a nice shot uh, and then go back into the room and into the, the craziness that is the girls getting ready in the morning. Right, on to our next point. This is a very straightforward, very quick little uh, posing tip I did probably in the last year. Um, it makes no sense, but as far as having the brides do something, as far as having anybody photographing do, is I think it's always best to have them do something natural, something that, <laughs> I know this isn't looking natural, something that is uh, organic or has them do something that, that seems as though they're doing something real. Uh, I'll come to some other things in a moment, like with things like earrings and so on, but having them do something that they would ordinarily do makes them comfortable and looks for more natural shot. Uh, one day, I, I just, I think a girl might have, been, may have actually been doing up a dress, and I said, listen, stop there, put you in good light, carry on doing what you're doing. Obviously, you can't do it the whole way up, but if you just go and Put on your dress so obviously this girl here cannot put on a dress fully beyond that point if at all but it makes her a nice interesting solo moment that looks like she's putting herself into a wedding dress so it's just a nice little take on the classic hands on the back of the dress the mother the bridesmaids putting the bride into dress some brides do get ready on their own with with help from the hairdressers so it's a nice shot just to have them on their own um, and you can mix it up this is the same bride just and having a few different angles so we have three different angles on the same shop which again adds to the collection of images you can produce as somebody right on to next right boys getting ready i know i know it's not an original idea i know it's it's done quite a lot but please don't forget the boys and the reason why i've included boys in this shot is i see too many images of awkward guys standing in a field or a car park looking bored and shaking hands with the best man as if they'd never met them before. The girls get an awful lot of attention on the wedding day morning and I, I just spent a little bit of time with the boys, quite often it's no more than 15 minutes with the boys in the morning and just spend some time with them making them look cool. They've also normally bought themselves a new suit, new cufflinks, quite often a new watch or something that's a little bit of a gift for them. So it's nice to get them uh, some nice, cool GQ, call it what you will shots. Um, quite often I concentrate on kind of three main areas. And again, I'm giving the groom something 
natural to do. So, and we'll come to a slide in a minute, which is which is ties, cuffs, and jackets. We're going to get them to to, to adjust or play with three different things uh, to give them something natural to do. Boys, in particular, not typically the best posers, so we want to give them something uh, interesting, uh, not interesting, something to, something to do that that feels natural to them. Find good light, put them in a position. Tell them you're going to spend three minutes with them, taking three shots, and you leave them in peace, and then go off and write the rest of the speech they're supposed to do. Um, by the way, this shot here was taken about three hours after they got married. So we didn't have the time in the morning. Quite often the boys are in one location and the girls in the other, and it's more important to go to the girls and the boys in their perception before the wedding day so that they don't have you go to the boys. Grab the groom before dinner, after dinner, whenever it may be that that time allows for your timetable, and just take them to one side for a minute and say, come with me, take your tie off, put your tie back on, adjust your cufflinks, do your jacket, and I'll leave you in peace. And then we'll time slip the images back in for early on in the day. Uh, again, I'm just, it's a similar, you'll see a similar vein through here of adjusting the tie, going through, uh, getting something interesting. This one's shot through a doorway. You can actually see the grooms and the reflection in there. So it was a very, very fast shot. As so for tie, cuffs, jacket. If you go through those three images, if you get in, you get three minutes with the groom, do one of each, uh, do cutaways and full bodies and just give yourself some uh, some extra shots in there. Um, tell me you're gonna make them look cool, they'll love you for life. Uh, let me go through a few more of these for you. Uh, again, that's our leading one. So this is the same chap here and here, but again, you'll see the power just cropping into the image. Watch out for double chins. He doesn't have one, but it can happen. Uh, so just by having by cropping away, to various parts of the groom, you'll then get a interesting shots, more intricate, rather than just being stuck with one, we're gonna get two, three, four shots in different angles. This is the same gentleman as we have up before, which is again in the afternoon. And again, we're almost, we're in slightly out of order here, but you'll get the feeling of photographing them looking as cool as they can look, as cool as we can all look as guys, really. Uh, if they have got cufflinks, get them to fill with cufflinks. Quite often the cufflinks have been given to them on the morning, either by best men or the bride sent them them or they bought them especially for the day. So it's nice to get a close-up of those as well. Lovely. Let's just go through a couple more here. Um, and that's the boys. Just don't forget them. Spend a few minutes with them before or, or after the ceremony just to get their side of getting ready as well. And I know boys are quite often photographed. It's just a case of don't forget them. Go back and get some shots that are interesting with them. Right. Fake window. Fake window, I'll cover it in a little bit of detail. And I actually uh, will then cut away to a video that shows you how I work this for... Many photographers carry prisms in their pockets. They'll cover, carry beads, they'll cover little crystals. Uh, we'll cover, carry all sorts of things in the bag to, to create interesting and, and kind of light effects with our images. Uh, I don't know when it happened, maybe five, six years ago, I had the idea of, of creating a fake window within a, a room. So quite often I would go outside if they were getting ready at home or if they're on the ground floor and shoot into the window to give kind of a third party kind of uh, a f feeling of looking in on the wedding day from that side's point of view. And it's not always possible when you're on the, the 49th floor of, of a large hotel or something. So I went and bought a three by four inch uh, piece of acrylic that I hold in front of my lens and I would get the same effect of having uh, as if I was looking through a window with whatever's behind me reflecting. And then the actual, the lens of the camera would then block enough of the, um, uh, acrylic to then be able to see clearly to where the bride is getting ready. So this works multiply well for having those kind of uh, reportage moments, those storytelling moments that just feels like there's somebody else uh, viewing the day and recording the day for them. So I, I would just pull out the bag when I'm getting ready and just use a little bit either during the obviously getting ready or the final stages, a few bridal portraits. I take that bag as well just to give a little bit more interest, a bit more, more layering to the images and a little bit more storytelling rather than being always a crisp, clear shot. There's nothing wrong with a crisp, crisp clear shot, but it's nice just to, to mask things up slightly as well. Uh, and I'll do this at various points throughout the day just to kind of give a feeling, but typically uh, getting ready in the mornings. Uh, as you can see, it just adds an extra layer or something. And plus, if, if there's usual chaos in a, in, a, in a wedding prep room as well, you can then uh, cover that up to a degree, although this room is obviously very messy with the, with the things in the background. Uh, I will now cut to a video of me showing you how to, how, what the perspex looks like and the acrylics, so hopefully you get a better idea of, of how we do these images. 
just to make it clear on with what I'm talking about with uh, the fake window. Uh, this is a, I think it's a three by four inch uh, piece of acrylic. I bought this on Amazon for less than five pounds, I guess less than five to eight dollars US. Uh, if you search for acrylic or clear plastic, you'll be able to find something very similar to this. And this just lived inside my camera bag. It was a great little go-to tool, uh, as well as some other bits and pieces. Some people carry prisms, some people carry uh, beads and so on, which I did as well. Uh, but this is the thing that I, I really love to carry with me. Um, I'll show you in a second through the camera what it actually does. Um, but just say it's, it's literally a flat piece of plastic. It's quite it's quite thick, um, and we put it in front of the lens. What I'll do now is I'll show you how it looks from that point of view, and then we'll see uh, the kind of effects that we can get with it. So to show you how the window works, this is me photographing into my studio in London. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to show you what happens when we take the sheet of press like this. In fact, you can already see what's going to happen and bring it up towards the window itself. So if you see where the shadow of the lens is, I'm actually creating quite a clear effect. So essentially where my reflector is could be where the bride is or where the action is. And then just by tweaking and, and flicking, essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking the piece of perspex back and forward like this. We're getting to see what's in the outside world. So if I actually come somewhere like here, you're getting what looks like I'm outside, but I'm actually inside. So you can see the uh, what's a library across the road from us, the reflection of that, and then we're right. So almost getting a double exposure type feel to it. We just see a bit more interest in the image. It's almost like that uh, third party just kind of looking in and an observer watching the wedding day. Uh, it worked well for us, especially when we're on the uh, 30 second floor and couldn't do anything else. So that's how it works for us. Uh, I said it's just a small piece of perspex. I kept it in my bag and it worked brilliantly for me for years. Hope that's helpful. Next we have earrings. Uh, earrings of sorts. This is a natural pose. We talked about natural posing earlier on with the boys with the cufflinks, with the uh, the guys doing up the jackets, with the girls doing up the back of the dress, which obviously isn't a natural pose, but giving somebody something to do that they're aware of how to do is going to act, it's going to appear a lot more natural than asking to put hands on hips and cross the feet over and bend the knees and bend the near knee and tilt the head to one side. There's enough pressure on the wedding day. So if you can get people to do natural things and have them feel natural, they'll look natural and that they'll be happy with it. So most brides wear earrings. What I always used to say was put your earrings in and then I'm going to take a shot of you looking as though you're putting your earrings in. So it's that moment of the finishing touches on the wedding morning. So see if you when they're ready, we'll go to them and say, right, Good. Go and fill it with your earrings. Uh, sometimes they thought there was something wrong. I say, right, go and adjust your earrings. Just look off to middle distance. I'm just going to get shot of you doing that because they did put the earrings on that day. It's nice just to show that as a stage of the day. Uh, by the way, this is the same bride one week apart. So we had two weddings, uh, a cultural wedding and an English wedding uh, a week apart. Um, it's just amazing on both of them. I'll go through this pretty quickly because it was very much a go-through shot for me. Uh, people knew I did it, people uh, understood it. I just put people into good light, told them to fill with their earrings. Um, and it just gave them something. Uh, one thing I will say is I make sure that they take their arms slightly off the body. Uh, typically, um, girls wear bare arms on wedding day and I don't know many girls who want squishy arms. So I just say, as you're adjusting your earrings, just take your arms slightly off your body just to give them more natural tone. So it's just a little bit of a a hint to what to say to people. Um, as you can see, I've done this a few times, so I'm gonna go through these very quickly just so you can get a feeling for how I did it with different people. And we'll come to one more here. Right, next we have mirror. Uh, and I know a lot of photographers use mirrors. I know we love reflections, I know we love the light it uses, but just something to keep in mind that when you've done a lot of the shots on the day or a lot of shots in a certain scenario, and you're looking for something else to do, it's always great to do look around for a mirror and it always adds an extra dimension it always adds an extra something else to the image that'll give you an extra image for you to then put into the album or to put into the collection or to make you wow them and rather than just having every shot done at eye level height and at the same angle as everybody else see what you can look to change and, and, and to photograph into um, this first shot here, it's, it's, it's a great illusion. It's a great, it's a great effect. In the fact, that actually there's two mirrors. There's one off to camera left as well that she's looking into, to then looking into the one where it looks as though she's looking at me to then looking back into me again. Um, never managed to do it since. Uh, it was just a nice thing to work very well. And obviously you can see we've also incorporated the earring shot into this. So we're doubling up now. We're having a couple of different shots from this kind of portfolio 15 that we're gonna run through in having them multi-layered. So we've got mirrors going on and the earring side of things as well. 
Uh, this, again, this is a beveled mirror. Um, it's very tricky to get in. Quite often you can't get the focus and quite often actually the images don't look as sharp as they could do because you're photographing into a, a 50 or 100 year old mirror. So um, be prepared for the fact that they won't be as crisp sharp as you're hoping them to be. But this is just shooting the bevel, moving around a little bit just to get a different effect. Um, and again, I believe I'm doing the earring shot again here. I did do other shots, but this is just, it seems to have come up. Uh, look around for different mirrors. Just ask them to either look into the mirror, look away, look whatever you want them to do. Uh, as you can see in this one, quite often do, doing the makeup side of things, it's it's a great shot to do as well because there'll be plenty of mirrors around there. Uh, I've even arranged lots of little small compact mirrors around the circle and made it look interesting. And the exposure quite often from them is really nice because the light's bouncing off the mirror and onto the subject themselves. Um, here's a few more for us. Again, earrings and mirrors. This one here is actually a, a, a long, a thin mirror uh, that people use typically in any room, but it's a freestanding mirror. So I just put it flat on its back essentially and photographed into it. We happen to have TV on at the same time with, with a great expression from uh, the girls on, on the screen. So it just kind of worked as far as having kind of multiple, multiple shots in there. And obviously there's a mirror behind, which I'm trying to avoid being in. Uh, so there's another idea for you if, you. if you have a mirror, you can always carry a mirror like the fake window, you can always carry a mirror with you as well uh, to get a similar kind of effect for it, but it's not always as easy. Uh, and one more from the same bride. Um, again, it doesn't have to be faces that appear in mirrors. It can be the body, it can be the dress. This is a, a nice cutaway shot of showing the back of the dress, which is something she didn't, isn't gonna get to see much on the day. She knows it's there and she knows how the dress looks, but just showing it nicely. And again, the exposure for the dress being because the nice light's coming in from the window and bouncing off the dress, we're getting a nice look on here. So it's just something different to consider really. Next up is lashes. Um, I did this shot almost every wedding, I think. Uh, the lashes shot, I don't know when I started it. Uh, I don't know where it came from. Some of these images are, or these ideas are my own. Some that just developed over years. Some of the ones I'm sure I saw out there somewhere. They're just the ones that became part of my arsenal of images. Um, a huge amount of brides will have fake lashes put on, whether they put on on the day or whether they put on uh, a few days beforehand and there's the, they're the semi-permanent ones, they will have gone to the time of having lashes attached to their eyes or eyelids, I should say. Um, it's a great shot to get. It's uh, something I would shoot with a very shallow depth of field. I would let them know I'm going to do it. Uh, quite often I would stand on a chair. I would have them sitting on a chair and I'll stand up high. Or if they can sit down in a wedding dress, I would literally stand on the tallest thing I can find and have them just look down and photograph their lashes. Quite often I get them to, not to close their eyes, but to just actually look down a bit. Uh, it actually creates this lash effect. I, If you have a macro lens, great. If not, and I used to shoot a lot on a 24-70, I did have a macro lens, but there isn't always time to pull it out of the bag. I would do a 24-70 shot at 2.8 or even f4. At that kind of closeness, you're gonna get a really shallow depth of field anyway, and just take a few shots of the lashes uh, just, just to have a nice extra image to put into your collection. Again, uh, when we have dramatic lenses. Once again, this is the same bride back to back on one week from another. I don't know if they're the same lashes though. Um, this is our leading image in here. This is actually a lady who married a wedding photographer, so it's always a privilege to marry and, and photograph another wedding photographer's wedding. Uh, you'll see the same principles coming through here. There is lots of big lashes. They've spent time and effort on these, so, so it's good to record them because they, they may never put them on again. They're so large. Uh, and same again in here. So lashes, great go-to shot. Great shot when you're getting uh, some portraits of them getting ready. It makes them an interesting one. It has a lot of dead space quite often, so interesting for album shots later on as well. Hope that's helpful. So signing, so certainly in the UK, and I know, I believe it's the same in, in other countries as well, that after the ceremony, the bride and groom go and sign uh, some paperwork. It's a classic shot. In fact, this is a shot that you'll see a million times over. Bride and groom with, uh, we in the UK, they're witnesses, and, and in this case, their child as well, um, sitting looking really awkward and a bit nervous, a bit everything else in front of them, and then a church which has radiators and chairs and, and things you can't control. Um, Having said that, this is a shot you should get. And I think most people do get this. Um, I always tell them to go, right, sit there and look awkward and they'd laugh and, and, and that'd be great. There is one more shot that's quite a good one to get. And it's a slightly more creative shot and it takes no time at all to do it. So what I would do is typically do this shot and they'll say, right, groom, keep the pen in your hand. And I just drop down and I take a close-up shot. Now, 
this may be different in other countries, but in the UK, you're actually not allowed to photograph the real register. Uh, quite often they'll bring out a fake one, which has fake names on it. Um, but at this angle, you'd never know. So to typically I say, right, pretend to sign your name, take the image, brilliant, that's fine, thanks very much. We'll take a shot, maybe from a couple of angles, um, and then we go to the, the bride and say, brilliant, now you sign your name. Actually, I think if you notice in this picture, there's, there isn't even any, any print on the uh, page, but you can fill it in later if you wish to in Photoshop, or it's typically better to find an image that has um, some writing on it. So as you can see, we, we were given uh, empty registers quite a lot, so registers quite a lot of the time. So uh, it's just a nice quick shot you can do. Uh, from this, the kind of cliche, traditional, classic shots, call it what you will, uh, to just having something a little bit more interesting and just add another three images into your collection for the day. You get the bride and groom to do it, it's also, and you can see in this image, a good time uh, to actually showcase the rings. It's the first time the rings have gone on. Uh, I'm going to come to the rings a little bit later on anyway. Uh, but the first time the ring has gone on the finger, so it's a nice one to photograph the hand with the ring and the um, pen as well. If they're left-handed, assuming the wedding ring goes on the left hand, it's quite nice to get them signing with the left-handed, so you're getting the signing and the ring at the same time. Drunk walking. Drunk walking is... I don't know where it came from. Again, uh, it's something I've, I've done for years. Uh, a huge amount of shots, and I'm sure a lot of us do it, is bride and groom, uh, what do we do, what do we do? Uh, walk away and then walk back. And they'll do that and it will be fine. But we want a man and woman who just married each other, who've got an amazing connection to show that connection. Um, and we'll give them again natural prompts to then try and elicit a natural response from them as much as we possibly can. Uh, appreciate not everybody drinks, by the way. So drunk can be replaced by dizzy or fun or whatever word you want to use to give them to just inject a little bit more energy into it. And what, I'm, what I typically did was, or do was, is send the bride and off, say, right, you're going to go and walk up to that tree and walk back again but you've had a few beers or you've had a few glasses of wine so I want you to go and go drunk walking and they go, Right, okay, and they get it, and they go, okay, and it's, it's that quite often thing that kind of, I don't, it, it, almost a misdirection. So I'll quite often ask people to do one thing, but I actually want to get the, a different reaction from them. So in this one, it's uh, go over there, walk like you're drunk, and see what happens. And rather than just walking in a straight line and straight back again, they'll start getting into it, they'll start having a bit of fun, they'll start connecting, and you may well get 10 wasted images, but you get one or two, which are really lovely. Of course, some take it to extremes, uh, which is again is a great fun image. Um, I think it's quite fun. But what you get is you get more dynamics in the images of um, one hanging hang back behind, one moving forward, a bit more connection. They start having a bit of a laugh and they forget that you're there. This is a very artificial situation. They just got married. You're standing there with a big bag on your back and a big lens in your hand. Uh, and photographing them in, in a very unnatural way. So giving them natural prompts is, is Hopefully, we'll elicit some kind of natural response from them. So, so here's a little sequence of the bride and groom walking along. That wouldn't be my chosen one. There, that one, they're a little bit far apart from each other. But then they start to connect and they start to have just a little bit of a moment together, which will elicit a smile and natural eye contact that will hopefully make give them a nice memory of the day. And when they look back on this, they'll just think they'll just see the connection that they had. They won't necessarily go, oh, hang on, we were drunk walking. It's a connection. It's a single image that kind of shows them together walking with, with a nice natural connection to them. Um, I use this so many times. And again, you can see here a nice sequence of a nice connection with a bride and groom just walking through there. In fact, they've got a drink already, so they may well have been drunk. Um, no, I don't think they were. But just gives a nice little sequence. Uh, and you can actually include multiple images. They will always choose one that they like, but if you if you are supplying digital images to them, there's nothing wrong with them. Then ha you then giving them four, five, six, seven images. The editing will be the same. You can batch edit them to then be very similar. So, so they've got this choice and maybe even create a sequence in the album. Um, as you can see, this is a something I've got a number of images of. And here's, here's another sequence. So bride and groom, late evening. Uh, this is after dinner, which is quite often in the middle of summer. I'll take bride and groom out after dinner because it's a bit of downtime and they want to get away from the family by that stage. Um, so a little bit of a sequence here of just some drunk walking and a connection. You can see there, they just come back together and they're, they're having a great time. Not always the most flattering, but it's it, we do get the right shots out of it in the end. Uh, and again with these guys. So drunk walking, dizzy walking, call it what you will, just to have a, a bit of fun with it for with regards to getting a connection between the bride and groom.
whisper. Uh, what I mean by this is, again, it's one of my prompts to a bride and groom, which was to say, um, go over there, cuddle up, tummy to tummy, just, just go natural. I quite often say, put your arms around his neck rather than having both hands on hips, like a high school dance. Uh, I just typically say, right, put your arms on his neck and groom, whisper anything you want into her ear. Doesn't matter what it is, just whisper whatever you want. Now this will go multiple ways. You will get the boys who are rude. You'll get the boys who go, have you seen what that guest is wearing? Or have you seen the state of that guest? Or they'll go, have you paid the, uh, the DJ? Has the DJ been paid? Either way, you're gonna get some kind of reaction. Um, more often than not, it is uh, more suggestive. So you will get an interesting uh, reaction from the bride, but it's something that has worked very well for years for giving them, just putting them in good light, giving them an excuse to stand together and just having them connect. Uh, some of them will be really sweet and nice, some of them will be a bit more ruder, but it always gets a certain reaction. And then you just step back and give them some distance just to, to be, uh, I, I'm like in this image, I quite often layered my images, so I'm going hiding behind trees, just leaving them be for a few minutes. Uh, it's something that can work very, very well. Uh, some boys uh, take to the extreme, uh, and we get fantastic shots like this as well. So not only do we have the whispering shot and the connection shot, we have her reaction shot as well. Again, this is just adding multiple times to uh, what we can get from the bride and groom and adding those little portfolio of extra images that you can pull on uh, as, as at every wedding. Uh, it works like a treat. Oh, we seem to have a drunk walking shot in there. There we go, drunk walking, use that one again. Um, more whispering shots. Every time I did it, we got a great reaction from them. So hopefully that's a nice little one to keep in, in your portfolio shots for you as well. Silhouettes. Silhouettes can turn a, an amazing looking uh, shot into a great one. It can just give you an extra variety for a, any image that you're about to take. So in any room or outdoors, there's always a silhouette to be had, assuming the, the, the light is in the right place. Um, I quite often two two shots at once, one which is naturally lit and one which is exposed for a silhouette. It's a nice little storytelling image that just is it's a bit more flattering, a bit more creative that they'll thank you for. Um, in the morning, so this room here, for instance, is a big open blank room. It was set aside just for the bride and groom to get ready in. Um, not the most ideal window. Ideal, ideal I'd have a window with uh, panes of glass in it and be a bigger uh, area, but you get the idea of having this bride in the room, getting ready, a nice little storytelling image. Uh, this one, I hope it's not too dark, but again, if we're getting a nice sunset, I was, um, we may well cover this in another video, but I did a lot of off-camera work as sunset. If there was ever a sunset that happened, the bride and groom would know that I'm gonna come and grab them and take them outside and set up a speed light and do an off-camera flash shot. Now my next shot would be switch off the flash, get it out of the scene and shoot a silhouette scene. Uh, what I don't typically uh, do is have the bride and groom connected because they're just going to look like one big mass uh, of body with two heads. Uh, what I will do is have them separate and quite often what I'd have them do is have them link um, fingers as if, and, and the game is called uh, different things in different countries, but in, in as I knew it, it was a game called Mercy, whereby you hooked hands and you actually went to bend the other one's fingers back. And it was a game we, we used to play and whoever's fingers you bent back the most, they would say Mercy and the game would be over. I wouldn't suggest you have the bride and groom do this, but link the hands like that. Again, by me saying to my bride and groom, link your hands as if you're playing Mercy, they go, gotcha, I know what we're gonna do here. And it would just be that one. Rather than being hands under, it was hands over and linking in together. Um, I found silhouettes worked so well, so much of the time. Uh, this room was an absolute mess going the other way around. So by having a silhouette and a nice bath in the background, it just, again, it was a different storytelling image. The hand on the back of the dress, and again, a sunset. And I don't mind the fact that there is the, the wheat there as well. It can add to it. I'll have the foliage. I'll have other things in there. As long as the foliage isn't going through the bride and groom, I don't mind at all. Uh, not a strict silhouette, but again, you're putting the light behind uh, the bride and groom to have a bit more of a silhouette feel to the image. Back to the boys getting ready in the morning. Uh, boy would tie silhouette. It, it works very well. So just keep an eye out for something that's a brighter background than it is your foreground and you can create a nice silhouette uh, there. Um, I shoot um, a lot in aperture priority and it quite often, if you just expose to the sky very quickly or even the cameras aren't always clever enough and I shoot in a 5D Mark IV um, to be able to expose the bride and groom and not the sky and so on. So quite often you just end up getting the silhouette anyway, so it worked very well for us. Uh, doorways is great for getting 
Uh, so uh, stand in the doorway, I'll get a shot of you exposed. And then I typically I'd run around the other side and get one that's naturally lit as well. Uh, so there you, go. Oh, there you go. You can see how they're holding each other's hands in this one. Uh, so this one, the shot there, holding each other's hands. They do look like they're resting a little bit, but you'll get the feeling for it. Uh, makeup mid in the morning, the dress going on. Keep silhouettes in the back of your mind. It's just a great extra creative shot that you can do as and when uh, you're kind of going, what do I do next? And then we'll find one, one final one from me from uh, Lake Como, this wedding was. Here's a good one. Uh, a fake first dance works so well for couple shots. What I quite often did was take them out. Uh, rather than having a awkward stand there, pretend you love each other type situation, it's one of those, again, giving them something natural to do that distracts them from the fact that you're taking the pictures. My fake first dance shots, uh, I would just send them out to a nice location, good environment, say, right guys, what you're gonna do is, and I'm sure you haven't done it already, but you're gonna go and practice your first dance. Some of them have been practicing for months. Some of them go, oh, we really need the practice because we haven't done enough of it already. This is a great opportunity for them to, to go over there, do something. Now, you're going to get a, a few different reactions. You're going to get uh, awkwardness, which leads to smiles and laughter and giggles. You're going to get them genuinely practicing the first dance, which can make for amazing shots. Or you're just going to get a whole range of things. Or they'll just stand there awkwardly and kind of do, do a shuffle. Either way, you're getting them to react and interact with each other to get a nice shot for you rather than just stand there stiffly going, oh my God, he's taking a picture. They'll forget you're there. You can just work around them, choose different angles, go high, go low, layer the images, whatever you want to do to, to get some images for them. So here's a few uh, ideas for you. This is obviously a, a sunset shot or late in the day. So I'll obviously put the sun behind them, uh, practicing the first dance and just, just having them having a moment together. They'll forget you're there, which is one of the main things I wanted uh, couples to do. Uh, some of them will go a little bit more uh, probably into their first dance with turns and twists and there's even dips been in there occasionally so it's a real nice opportunity for them if nothing else to practice the first dance but you'll get some nice shots and they'll forget you're there you can move around here's some more ideas this is actually the same couple that were photographed mom to go in front of the um, castle so uh, you can see just by moving around changing you, actually, you get completely different looks and feels to something as well and there they are again so as you can see just by Letting them go, letting them practice the first dance, letting them have some fun with the shots. They'll forget you're there, the smiles are real, the interactions are real, and you get great shots from a first dance. Next is rings. I know we all photograph rings, all we should do. They've spent time, money, effort, um, choosing the right rings for them. What I mean by photographing the rings is spend time on the rings, and the best time I found to shoot the rings is during the meal. Um, during the meal, yes, I'd photograph the chit in the chat in between courses. I'd photograph the food itself because it was the biggest expense of the day. But then during the main meal, quite often on the main course, I would say to Brian, going, right, can I just borrow your rings? I'm going to go and photograph them creatively and I'll give them back to you in five minutes. Or I'd joke and say, oh, I'm just going to pop these on eBay or something that just to kind of diffuse the situation. And 99 times out of 100, they go, yeah, no problem at all. And they take the rings off and hand them straight over to you. Um, this is your opportunity then to go and create something that's a bit more interesting than the groom or the, the the rings in the palm of the hand or trying to take a shot that's interesting with the best man standing over you because he's scared to death of letting, letting the rings out of his sight. So by getting uh, them after the dinner, after the ceremony, or sorry, during the dinner and after the ceremony, they're a bit more relaxed about where the rings go. So just spend a bit more time. And I would typically just go around and find uh, different places to photograph them and in a bit more light. It doesn't have to take very long, but it just gives you a bit more freedom to shoot them rather than having that pressure in the morning. Uh, this is on a wall outside. I've shot this, I think, obviously with a macro lens. Um, and, and if you do have a macro lens, it doesn't have to be an expensive macro lens. I had one macro lens that was used for one purpose, which was doing rings uh, and very little else. So it just gives you time to, to um, uh, to do something interesting with the macro lens. Um, rings, by the way, this is a nice setup. Rings will typically balance like this without any help of um, blue tack, as we call it, or gum or whatever kind of thing that you want to, want to stick things together with. They will typically rest in this kind of uh, situation, in, the, in this kind of shape. Might take a few goes, but just have a play with it and you can quite often get all three rings. That's engagement, his wedding ring, her wedding ring to stand up together um, in one thing. Um, 
This one is slightly more complicated uh, because I was, I was messing around a little bit with it. Uh, this one is stuck down, so the, so the ring that's standing up is stuck into, I think the putty would be a good word for it in the US. Uh, blue tack we use, uh, something sticky that you can put down there and hide behind the guy's ring. Um, I had a LED uh, light, little video light, uh, and I think I just uh, sprayed some water in the air. Uh, I, I had to bring the water bottle with me. I actually stopped doing it because I was carrying so much stuff with me, but for a couple of weddings, I brought a little spray bottle and I shot into it, and I did this shot in, in minutes on the uh, table in the bar area. I know it's a classic with the with the heart reflect with a heart shadow, but it works. Grab a book, put the rings into it. Uh, it's a nice little effect. You've seen it before. We've all seen it before. The bride and groom may well not have seen it before, so they'll think you're lovely and a genius by coming back and giving them a ring shot that has hearts in it. Um, so it's just something else to, to think about. And and remember reflections as well. Reflections on a wooden table uh, with a ring set up to it. It's just it's something different to, to hand back to the bride and groom. Uh, if you do carry fairy lights with you or if you've got fairy lights, lots of places venues have fairy lights or LEDs or, or tungsten lighting somewhere, just use that behind uh, you for them. So um, this isn't my original idea. I think I found this on Pinterest. It's a heart with the rings in it. Not the best lighting ever, but I like the shot just to show you kind of a, another idea to do. And again, look for interesting surfaces. I think this is a briefcase. That's concrete outside on the floor that we walked on. This is a Laurent Perrier champagne bucket, the bride and groom. The first time I met them, the second time I met them at the wedding, it was very heavily champagne orientated. Uh, so I thought incorporating champagne without it being obviously in a glass of champagne or in a bottle, I thought we would do something different with it. Um, so I shot for that. And again, I'm just going to show you some more shots here. And again, these images will all be on Pinterest just to, to, so you can have a look at it as a point of reference. Now, the cigar shot. I said earlier about giving the grooms and the groomsmen a little bit of time. Uh, I think photographers, uh, we can always be guilty about looking after the girls and not always necessarily the boys. Um, if you look after the boys, you'll be a hero forever uh, and they'll then refer you one as one, not just on the bride side of things. Um, I quite often say to the boys, listen, what I'm gonna do is after the first dance, before I leave, I'm gonna get you and your groomsmen together. I'm gonna to do a cool whiskey and cigar shot, we call it. Or it doesn't have to be alcohol again, or cigars for that matter. But it's just something that the boys can uh, have as a shot for themselves. Uh, the girls are gonna get lots of shots. There's gonna be nice shots of the boys, but this is the groom and his best friends, his uh, quite often uh, brothers, quite often brother-in-laws. They're, they're, they're his closest friends. So it's nice to get a quote unquote cool shot for him and the boys together. So it can be as simple as taking them outside. Uh, they don't need jackets on at this stage. They don't necessarily need the ties on. It'd be nice if they kept their other clothes on, which wasn't always the case, uh, and just get a shot of them together looking cool, smart, whatever you want to call it. Um, some of them will have had, depending on, on what kind of wedding it is, some of them will have had alcohol and can be hard to rein in. It's always good to get them uh, in, in, in one place at one time. There are those, I do keep an eye on this, um, quite often if they're uh, getting married age, they may have lost a groom at some stage throughout the day because they're a parent or they've had to go for some reason. Just, just find out if that is the case and make sure they're all going to be there for this shot. Um, we don't always have the weather to take them outside. So bring them indoors, getting them a drink, sitting down, and just basically tell them to talk rubbish to each other. Tell, tell them why, why he shouldn't have got married. Tell me uh, the most embarrassing story you know about the groom. Just something that's going to invoke a natural conversation between them. Uh, and then just sit, sit there on the other end of the table or sit in the room and, and just take some shots of them. Um, it's amazing how boys will pose easier than you think they will. So I tell them, they're kind of going, yeah, okay, listen, just be there, be cool, be... You know, whatever it may be, so potential for some film, send a TV series, be who, the hero you want to be for nine seconds. Um, those of you who will notice that the smoke in this image is, is fake. It's because in England you cannot smoke indoors. And, but we wanted to do the shot indoors because it was actually during the day. So we, we did the shot earlier than expected because we were going to lose somebody from the group. So we put in the smoke afterwards. It's uh, real enough, shall we say. Um, same groom again. So obviously this is the same groom as in this image. So again, to expand on these shots, do a shot of him on his own, him and his best man or men, and him and all the boys together. So you're gonna get a nice range of shots. And if they do manage to, to actually smoke a cigar, get that shot as well. This is shot with a video light from the camera left, and then the cigar being lit, uh, which is a real, uh, which is real for this time. Uh, let me show you a few more examples. 
think boy band, think uh, ballers, think you know, suave mafia films almost that, that the guys all think they're going to be part of uh, or like that kind of look and feel, should we say. So just put them together. They can be as relaxed as they want. They're quite often being mouthy at this time. They're quite often be chatty, but just getting them in and somebody's have to rein them in. I've had to shout at them before now, kind of going, no, calm it down. Give me, give me 10 seconds to pretend to look cool and they can go off and be idiots again. And they go, fine, we'll do that with you. Um, if you do want to get a bit more complicated with it and if they will let you to, I mean, this is obviously using two external lights, two, two speed lights on, on a stand. We went for a quick walk with the boys just as sunset was coming in. And then actually straight after the shot, we then did a shot with the bride and groom as well. So we doubled up on the location that we had. Um, again, it's, it's a similar idea. This is just a video light off to one side. You know, on the count of three, he's the funniest guy in the room. On the count of three, tell us the most embarrassing story about him ever. On the count of whatever, just give them a prompt that's going to forget you're there and just take a ton of shots and make sure you, you get some interesting ones of them. Um, again, same principle, different location, nice reaction. They will love this shot forever. Um, this shot was interesting to say the least. Uh, we're actually on a snooker table, as you can see, and I had two other guests from the wedding tipping the actual snooker light towards them to, to give a nice even lighting um, and then getting them all to, to look at me, which was a challenge. There is there, there was multiple times in this shot where I tried to get people's attention, which didn't work, but we got one shot, which is great. And here's an interesting thing. Then the girls wanted the same shot. The girls saw the shot, went, we want the same. So we went and round up all the girls, got them in, and the boys had their snooker shot and the, and the girls had theirs, which was lovely. So, so don't forget the girls. The girls also want cool shots. But it's just a nice thing for the boys that they do tend to get forgotten about. Uh, I say if they do shoot cigars, great. And if you can get them all together or just doing something of interest and taking an unusual angle, make them look cool, they'll, they'll love you forever. Final image. Final image was something I introduced for, for a couple of different reasons. Um, my, and I think a lot of wedding photographers suffer from this, that when it's time to leave, it's hard to go. Whether you said whether you said you're going to shoot for a certain amount of hours, or you're going to stay until an hour after first dance, it's always tough to leave. Um, as photographers, we want to be create. We want to create more images. We want to do more things. We could stay till midnight, but in fact, there's another wedding tomorrow, or there was one yesterday, and it's not fair to everybody else to just stay there forever, and you might have to drive to the next wedding, whatever it may be. By creating a final dramatic image, I wanted an amazing image that will go on the album. I want an amazing image that they may well put on the wall. And I wanted almost a line in the sand kind of going, okay guys, we're gonna take it aside for your final Im image and then I'll leave you in peace to enjoy the rest of your wedding. And it was almost that, rather than walking up to him going, well, I'm off now, bye-bye. It's more of a, here's your final image. We're gonna do an amazing shot and then I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your wedding. And it was that real soft line in the sand that went, brilliant, he's back to this, I know what he's gonna do. Let's go and do something interesting. Where are we going to do it? And, and if you start to shoot these, people start seeing them, whether it's on your show, social media or when you've had meetings with them, and they'll start getting into the idea of having this nice big dramatic image to finish. So I think with the images here, I've been quite fortunate in having quite a lot of nice venues, but it, you can always come up with something that's just nice, dramatic, and interesting that's going to, that's going to give them a, a nice finishing shot. In fact, this shot here, it's very simply between two walls, and there had to be some nice lights lit up. So I shot low down uh, and up just to give them something different as well. In fact, I shot this image upside down. Um, I had to flip myself upside down to get as close enough to the ground to take the shot. Um, when you have a staircase like this, you should showcase it, of course. But this was actually the last shot or two of the evening. We just went, let's go out. Everyone's dancing. Let's spend some time because otherwise there would have been people in this area. Let's go and shoot and showcase the venue that you chose. In fact, they were actually married on those stairs as well. So it's a real special place for them. You get one last image. Thank you very much. Thank you for making me such part of your day. I've thoroughly enjoyed being here. I'm privileged that you allowed me to be part of your wedding. Thanks very much. And I'll see you again. And so just doing something that's going to be that big dramatic image the wedding day. If you don't have an amazing venue, bring some uh, jewels, crystals with you, sit them down in, in a room and just shoot through them like on this. So it doesn't have to be an outdoor image. We, we don't always have the best weather. We don't always have the best um, environments to go into, but just by creating something and having an idea in your head of going, right, that's going to be my final shot tonight. 
Um, I'm going to go through a few more of these for you. So similarly, these guys were actually married uh, and had a marquee wedding, so we just found a space outside that worked well for them. Uh, this is the opening one from my initial slide. This is the stunning hotel called the Corinthia in London. Um, and this is from my wedding where, where we did in Italy. So just giving them that final image will then kind of seal off your day, give them an amazing experience and know that, that there's a definitive end to you being there. So there's multiple reasons for it, all for good reasons, but just otherwise I, I've stayed at weddings for an extra two hours, three hours where I go, I don't know when I can leave because things have moved on and changed. So that's um, a nice definitive point to it. Well, that's the last of the 15 ideas. Um, I hope it was interesting. I hope you liked some of the images. Um, I hope it made sense to you. I, some of them you may already do. Some of them may be different for you, but it's just nice to have a little catalog of images in your head that goes, I can do a silhouette. I can do a fake window. I can do a, a final image. I can do a boy shot. Yeah, I, I ignore the boys, but maybe I'll do some more shots from next week. Whatever it may be that you got from this, I hope you like it. Um, please do leave uh, a comment below. I'm sure there'll be lots because there the, the always is with photography. Uh, so leave a comment below. If you have a great idea that you um, that have, that you think, actually, this would be a great idea to share in this kind of forum, sit, stick it in the comments below. I mean, we, as I said in my intro, maybe we'll get enough that we can we can do a second video of this. I certainly have more ideas than this that I used to go to, but I just thought keeping it at, at a relatively normal number would be a good starting point. Um, if there is other ideas that we haven't done before, I may well produce a video where we go out and shoot them and, and kind of get some ideas together as well. Um, that's my 15 ideas. I hope it was useful for you. Uh, I hope you found it interesting and um, I'll see you in the next video. I hope that's useful for you. Uh, I think hopefully some of you will be going out and buying a little piece of, of Perspex now. Uh, I think it works really well. It all just sat in my camera bag and was a great thing. And all the other shots we had in there as well. Uh, the boys really appreciate being photographed. We had a little bit of time with them uh, in the evening and they'll love you forever. You get them off the dance floor, you get him and his friends around together and they really appreciate that shot. And I know a lot of them use it as their uh, Facebook profiles and they just share it like crazy because it's something different for the boys to have. Uh, that was 15 images. I have plenty more if you ever want to see another uh, edition of this. As I said before, if you do have any go-to images that you'd like to share with people, leave them in the comments below. Maybe we'll do another video. Maybe we'll ask you guys uh, no, to, uh, uh, to come on and, and talk to us about the shots that you think are your go-to images at weddings. Uh, thanks so much. Please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next video.